Phil, thank you so much for, uh, for sitting down with me. Thank you. Um, lately, we've been hearing a lot about plant breeding innovation. Why was it important for the European Seed Association to engage much more on that topic? Um, I think it's, first of all, it's a, it's a complex topic mm -hmm. and it's easy to misunderstand what it is. So the industry has a communication job to do to simply explain what it is and how it benefits society and how it benefits multiple stakeholders across society. Mm -hmm. So I think that the key thing was making sure that people start understanding what it's about and also challenging um, people who are trying to uh, demonize or trying to uh, attack this new technology is something that's basically not beneficial for society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you've helped ESA mm -hmm. in their uh, campaign Embracing Nature. And uh, how, how did you go about it, setting up this campaign? Well, it's been a really exciting project. And uh, we started actually by going in the fields. And okay. we met people who mm -hmm. actually are breeders to mm -hmm. understand exactly what they do, what their challenge is. And then we did research online. Excellent. So we tried to understand the, the, the landscape of uh, the, the internet on Twitter, on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, what were people saying around this, so that we could try to define the missing link or the, the, the kind of gap in the narrative. And from there, we also talked, of course, to the industry and to people um, actively involved. Mm. And, and from there, we developed this umbrella concept, embracing the power of nature and decided that uh, social media was the right place to really lead this conversation. Okay. Um, you've you've uh, developed some, uh, some new tools. We're at the start of the campaign. Mm -hmm. You've developed some new tools and some, some outreach. Uh, why was this necessary? Well, I think that the key challenge for this and many other industries mm -hmm. is that there's a space in social media that's being occupied mm. by uh, NGOs by highly emotional yeah. people who basically don't like certain things and spread rumors and fake news mm -hmm. and essentially uh, a lot of industries are very uncomfortable in entering into that conversation and mm -hmm. so they think it's dangerous and they should stay out of it and as a result of that it leaves this this vacuum which is occupied by the other side so you only hear mm -hmm. one voice Yep. And for us, it was critical to say, first of all, to recognize that this space is really important. Secondly, to start creating and, and telling a story in this space and use mm -hmm. the tools mm -hmm. like Facebook, like Twitter, uh, other and, and like YouTube to basically say, we have a really interesting story to tell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't agree with everything that's said out there. And we want to change the narrative. We want to change the conversation okay. to have an open, science-based, fact-based conversation about yeah. the future yeah, yeah, of plant yeah, yeah, breeding. Yeah. Great, excellent. Sounds sounds very good. Um, you, um, uh, we've seen that in society uh, there are more and more groups lately that seem to be very reluctant in accepting science, in uh, in um, in taking over uh, peer-reviewed mm -hmm. uh, scientific data. Uh, can you share a bit your thoughts on what is driving that development, and and more, probably more importantly, how can we change that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think personally that this is a worrying development sure. and there is this growing uh, skepticism from the public. We're seeing this all over Europe in the US where people are mm -hmm. saying, for instance, in the vaccine space that they don't want their kids to be vaccinated mm. um, because they're reading stories that are misinforming them. And what what's happening in, in my judgment is that we have these new tools in which these stories spread and not enough uh, positive stories mm -hmm. of uh, doctors or farmers or breeders yeah. are there to counter this narrative and to show people the real science and the real stories behind it. Mm -hmm. So I think as a, as a concerned citizen, as a parent, uh, it's really important to shift that conversation to get people who care mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about science, who care about the future, to really engage in and correct these misperceptions. Um, because I think we're at risk of having political decisions being made based on whoever shouts the loudest that would have really devastating consequences for the future of society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're um, trying to change the perception mm -hmm. in, in the general audience and often that starts with the decision makers. Let's assume you have a room full of the top EU officials in front of you, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? 
Well, I would tell them that they need to be open and honest about the challenges they're facing. Because mm -hmm. often for them, it's easier not to get into a conversation mm -hmm. because they don't want to be attacked by mm -hmm. NGOs because it's not popular. Mm -hmm. And sometimes making a difficult decision and explaining something complicated is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, they, they're reluctant to do it. So what I would say is, you know, it's, it's time for all of us, and I think mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. industry, responsible citizens, as well as politicians and decision makers to say, okay, let's have an open and honest conversation and let's yeah. not do it based on, you know, the biggest, the loudest voices, okay. but let's really go to the science, go to the facts and recognize when things are wrong, mm. but also recognize when, you know, the, the easy thing is not the right thing. The mm. easy choice isn't the, you know, just because you don't, you're not going to get attacked by taking a position does yeah. not mean it's right. And I think sometimes officials mm -hmm. are swayed by this story. Very much. And they kind of know at some level that mm. it's probably not that right, but they mm. think, you know, I'm not gonna go there. And I think they need to go there. They need to call uh -huh. out people who are lying, people who are distorting the facts, mm -hmm. and they need to be an active part of that conversation. Yeah. And I think it's beginning to happen, mm -hmm. but I think we need much braver politicians and officials who say, okay, let's look at that because it's important, because if we don't do it, there are massive consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know there was uh, last week uh, a conference on um, a plant breeding innovation mm -hmm. in Brussels, and, and, and you mentioned we've been seeing some of that. Can mm -hmm. you share a bit of your experience with that conference? Yeah, so I think what I saw from the conference um, online yes. was that, um, first of all, there is an openness to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And there's a willingness to start finding the right solutions going forward. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think people are open to that. But then, for instance, I think um, you, you, you can't just say that. You then have to work on it mm. and you have to have those difficult conversations. So my, my understanding was that, first of all, there were some productive conversations. Mm. Secondly, uh, there were some interesting online conversations that were kind of connecting so to the it, room. Yeah. And I think that was a positive sign for what we're proposing. Mm. Um, I also think that this has to go on, this has to go deeper, mm -hmm. and people have to really say, okay, what are the hard questions we have to answer, and how can we bring the people around the table mm. from industry, from scientific backgrounds, from NGOs, and say we have a responsibility to find solutions and not just go dogmatically to jump for the simplest, loudest, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. emotional story, but actually let's go to the science and let's be open and honest and I know that this is obviously always something difficult mm -hmm. but I think in today's day and age it's even more important than it's ever been mm -hmm. to actually accept that if you want things to move in the right direction you have to be really uh, engaged and really thorough about these discussions. Mm -hmm. Sounds fantastic. Thank you Phil. Thank you very much.